Uh, I'm Andrew Cassell, uh, as uh, Nick mentioned, uh, from outside of uh, Washington, D.C. And uh, the company that I work for, the place I've been for the last nine years uh, building web applications is the Marine Spill Response Corporation. And uh, MSRC is the largest uh, dedicated oil spill uh, and emergency response uh, organization in the United States. I work there as part of a small team um, with two extremely, extremely talented developers. I say that because I know this is going on YouTube later and they're gonna watch it, um, <laughs> so I have to. But yeah, we build uh, their internal applications there to uh, manage oil spills and to respond. So first off, I'd like to thank uh, you guys all for coming here today. Uh, really appreciate the opportunity. So far, I've really enjoyed the city of Omaha. That's all I knew about Omaha before I came. Uh, this talk will reference uh, the work of these fine gentlemen up here, and I couldn't have done it without them. So um, I'm here today to talk to you about the future of computer interaction, and that future is virtual reality and augmented reality. And uh, what has been science fiction uh, is now closer to becoming science fact and reality. And uh, you know, I'm sure there's some Trekkies out there in the audience today, and I'm sure you fantasized like me walking into a holodeck with Commander Riker or Deanna Troy. Um, it's becoming more and more uh, real today. And uh, of course, Star Wars uh, showed us augmented reality in the form of holochess. And there's plenty of great science fiction novels out there that talk about virtual realities. And of course, the, the movie The Matrix being the penultimate virtual reality movie. Um, and this is really what we're talking about building is a fully immersive experience um, that people will enjoy. So today I'm gonna ask you to take the red pill and let's see how far the rabbit hole goes. Because as computer graphics have gotten better and better, it's gotten to the point where it's almost uh, hard to tell what is real and what is fake. And what virtual reality and augmented reality do is basically a fancy magic trick. Um, so if you have uh, put two images uh, over top of um, someone's eyes, you can basically fool their brain into thinking they're in this environment. So why care about um, virtual reality and augmented reality? Well, the first reason is uh, the finances of it. Uh, nobody really knows how big of a business this is gonna be, but everyone's projecting in the 100 billion to trillion dollar range. It's just, it's unknown at this point. Um, and there's clearly uh, some examples where, you know, virtual reality and businesses and gaming and entertainment are all gonna come together and it's gonna be a big deal. Another reason to care is um, if you're like me and you work for Lord Business, um, it's good to take a break and do something fun and creative like Justin mentioned earlier. There really isn't a whole lot of um, business opportunity right now in web, uh, in virtual reality and augmented reality, but so for right now it's just fun. And fun is important, so if you base your personal philosophy in life on The Shining, I would highly recommend having an outlet in virtual reality. <laughs> so, um, one thing that um, is common in the, the la landscape of augmented reality and virtual reality is what they call the virtual reality, uh, sorry, reality, virtual reality continuum. And that goes from the reality that we are in all the way through to a virtual reality. So first off, what is reality? Well, reality, of course, is the entire universe around us. Oh wait, well, actually, um, some scientists think that the universe might actually just be a giant hologram. Uh, this is called the simulation hypothesis. Uh, so if you uh, track uh, computer performance uh, backwards and forwards, you project it. Uh, right now, we can simulate down to subatomic particles around the size of a few molecules. Uh, if you look out 50 to 80 years, uh, we'll be able to do entire organisms. And then like another 50 years, you'll be able to simulate an entire human. Um, so if you just extrapolate that out, um, <laughs> Silas Bean, for example, hypothesizes that it's more likely that we're living in a simulation anyway. Um, so that you're probably just a vet in a, you know, a thing with wires coming out and you're, you're not really here. Um, so sorry for ruining reality for you <laughs> uh, before lunch, but uh, we'll just keep going. We'll just pretend like it's, you know, everything's great. It's what we all do anyway. So the first stop in our uh, train of um, virtual reality is uh, the augmented reality, which um, has been around for a long time. Obviously had military applications, uh, if you've watched Top Gun. Uh, it has a lot of industrial applications, like being able to see through surfaces and find out what is, you know, using uh, engineering drawings. 
Uh, in Japan, let me see here if I can get audio. They have whole augmented reality concert, concerts with uh, Hatsune Miku and get 6,000 people to attend a virtual con uh, concert. Only in Japan. So augmented reality devices, uh, one of the most famous is the Google Glass, uh, which basically projects something out uh, in your field of vision. Uh, the newer devices coming out are like the Meta 2, the Microsoft HoloLens. And what this can do is basically um, display things in the reality that you're in. And it'll, it'll overlay uh, images and graphics over top of stuff. So this is a guy wearing the device and watching his daughter play in real time over the internet. Uh, and if you can imagine if you're traveling away from your kids, how cool this would be. Lots of feels there. So another company that's doing stuff is Magic Leap. Uh, their stuff is even more impressive. Uh, it's crazy if it's real, um, the stuff that they're doing. I mean, you basically have this whole virtual uh, desktop experience. Augmented reality is becoming more popular uh, now with uh, Pokemon Go and face swapping, which are two uh, <laughs> incredibly useful uses of the technology, but hey. The mustache thing we saw earlier is another example, yeah. So what can we do in the web with augmented reality? Well, the way you do augmented reality in the web is basically you have a video element, which is an HTML5 video element underneath a canvas, and you do those with vertical positioning, or Z-index, um, and you lay them on top of each other and use uh, WebGL uh, to do the, the graphics on top of it. And WebGL is, has great browser support. Uh, there's a library out there that I would highly recommend that you use if you're going to do this called 3JS, and it handles a lot of the Canvas stuff uh, for you. Now, um, one of the ways you can do augmented reality is using what they call trackers. This is an augmented reality tracker, and what that's going to do is, uh, on the camera feed, track that in 3D space and tell you exactly where it is. So I've built a little demo here that we're going to go through here. It's a uh, frozen uh, sing-along puppet show. So uh, the code for this is pretty simple. It's just a regular basic HTML page. And we've got tons and tons of uh, JavaScript libraries because we did not use Webpack to combine them all. <laughs> so um, yeah, the, the code, I would recommend going up on GitHub and looking at it. It's, uh, it's not too terribly complex. You have a 3D, uh, 3JX, uh, th 3JS rendering engine that you're going to use to basically uh, display elements on the canvas. So I need a volunteer. Who wants to come up and do a puppet show with me real quick? Oh, come on. I'm just going to pick somebody by random. Nobody? Come on down. Come on down. Next, the next time, somebody's going to want to do this, I swear. What's your name? Tony. Tony? All right. Everybody see that? Wait, hold on. There we go. All right. Come over here and stand in front of the camera and hold some tags. And as it detects it, should. I don't know why it's. Oh, we, we don't have internet. Internet fail. Well, anyway, there should be. Somebody's working here. Nope. There should be images over top of it. Sorry. No. Yeah, that's okay. No, we're okay. We'll skip it. All right, thanks anyway. Hold on. Presence. Thank you very much. Go check it out on GitHub. Uh, you'll... All right, so um, you, know, you can do a lot more uh, with that. Uh, here's an example on video that actually show you it working, is a, a video of the Hatsune MQ actually running, and my computer is stopping for a second. There we go. So you can do a, a full uh, WebGL video on top of that marker, but for some reason it's not working. OK, we'll just keep going. So the next thing in the continuum is uh, augmented virtuality. And this is really stupid. Um, basically, it's uh, real objects in a virtual space. And there was a TV show in the 80s that did this. And um, I was going to get a bucket and have somebody demonstrate it out here, but it just seemed ridiculous. 
So we're going to keep going here. Um, so the real uh, interesting thing is virtual reality. And I'm sure you've all seen um, past virtual reality devices. Um, one of the most famous one uh, was from Nintendo. My computer is absolutely hosing itself right now. It's fantastic. I'm going to exit out of the slides. Kill Chrome. That might help. Sorry. There we go. All right, so from Nintendo, the uh, Virtual Boy, which was absolutely horrible and nausea-inducing. Uh, so, but now we have modern VR devices like the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive and the Google Cardboard. Um, today's demos are all going to be on the Oculus Rift, um, which uh, is a uh, total immersion device. Uh, basically, it's going to completely replace your vision and everything that you see around it. One of the, my favorite things to do in it is uh, racing games. Um, they're a lot of fun. Basically, it's going to be choppy as crap, but you can see everything around you as you're racing. Um, there was an organization called NoTankers.ca that did a virtual reality exhibit that um, showed what they imagined to be a really horrible oil spill uh, in virtual reality and had people look at it, which I think is a very uh, impactful experience. So uh, today, we're going to talk about web VR specifically. And w the web VR, uh, the important part of that is the web. And the reason why it's important is and it's better than regular uh, virtual reality is you have everything that is beneficial in the web in virtual reality. So no installs. It works on many devices. There's no vendor lock-in. And even on your device, you can use many different br uh, browsers. Uh, there are a lot of downsides to it. So uh, vendors are constantly updating and breaking things. They have breaking changes uh, all the time. Like the, the regular Oculus Rift does not work right now in web VR because of updates. Um, the frame rate has been a problem. Um, 60 frames per second is just not enough, and that's the max uh, it was. It's being changed, but uh, that tends to lead to most motion sickness. And right now, web VR development is more of like hipster development. It's not mainstream at all. Another bad thing is there are tons and tons of wires, as you can see as we're setting this up. It's nuts. There's just crap everywhere right now. I don't know where anything is, but uh, it's very uh, complex. Um, there's also very little uh, Mac support. Um, so if you want to get into web VR development, you can do some of this stuff in the Mac, but you really need a PC <laughs> uh, if you want to do anything interesting. So um, you know, we've gone through the whole uh, smartphone revolution, um, and that's changed the way we're doing uh, development for the web. VR is going to be the next uh, thing just like that. So, you know, as you've moved from different devices uh, to different devices to get your websites to work, you're going to be doing the same thing with uh, VR. Uh, this is a phablet, which is a great phone if you're an introvert, because it covers your entire face. Um, a lot of people think that the in Internet of Things is going to be huge uh, for the web. I'm not sure why your refrigerator needs to tweet how many glasses of water you drink a day. But I think that uh, virtual reality is going to be uh, far more important. So um, there's a team at Mozilla that is uh, leading the charge. They're at mosvr.com. You guys hit that. They have a lot of information on how to uh, do everything you need to do to get started in virtual reality development. Um, there is a web spec uh, that is being worked on, uh, constantly updated. It was updated a couple days ago, I guess yesterday, the last time. Uh, you can read through that if you want to learn more about it. Um, but uh, you know, the, the whole interaction of uh, virtual reality is becoming more and more big business. There's a lot more investment. So I think there's potential if you guys get into the ground floor right now. I can give you a good deal. And you really um, can you know, become the next Zuckerberg. Now, Facebook is doing some really cool stuff um, with virtual reality. You guys will see this uh, pretty soon. Uh, but you know, if you have two people across country, you can basically tour with somebody in virtual reality, uh, one of your friends, and you know, screw around and make t each other ties and do selfies and stuff like that. It's a lot of fun to do over virtual reality. And virtual reality is going to have far-ranging uh, business uh, uh, you know, reasons to do it. These are all web VR examples here. Um, this is from uh, Shopify. They did a virtual shopping. You have virtual real estate. You have education, um, things like in medical devices and things that doctors can use uh, for both learning and potentially for surgeries. So um, web VR is going to be uh, big. So how do you get started in, in a web VR? Well, like I mentioned before, you could get the 3GS plugin and just do it all yourself uh, and, and you know, get as far as you can with that. But I would really recommend a uh, library called A-Frame. And A-Frame is developed by the team at Mozilla that I mentioned. Um, and what it is, it's an open source package that uses 3GS and WebGL. 
and allows the, you to basically abstract a lot of that away. It works on VR mobile devices and desktop, and it does what the, is called an entity component system. Uh, so it makes it a lot easier. You don't, have, you don't have to write a lot of JavaScript in order to do this, and handles all the animation and events. To summarize, what it means is if you can write HTML, you can develop for virtual reality. <laughs> so here is a virtual reality website. It looks very, very similar to what you're, uh, you guys are probably used to. Uh, some custom HTML5 tags that are going to define the scene. We've included the uh, A-frame source here. That's the JavaScript file that you need. And if we take a look at what this does, this will render, if you just look at the A uh, scene tag from now on, that is going to render these blocks, and you'll be able to move around. So if you just do that in your browser, it'll work just in your browser. Use your mouse to, to move around the view. And if you want to make changes, um, it's pretty easy. You just uh, change the markup a little bit, and the uh, virtual reality scene changes. And if you want to do rotations, things like that, it's, it make it very simple uh, to build a scene. And of course, that'll work on an iPad. So any desktop, iPad, or virtual reality device. So if you want to get um, a little more advanced, uh, you can start including assets, which are images. They're just regular HTML tags. You can use HTML5 video, anything like that, that you can use normally in the web. So what you need uh, to make a, like a backdrop is what they call an equirectangular uh, photo that's all stretched out like that. And that's going to, uh, when it's imported into the scene, turn into a uh, virtual 3D space. So as you uh, rotate your head around, it's going to track where you are. So it, I mean, as you add more and more components to uh, build your scene, you can get uh, more and more complex. And then if you do a little bit, you can do a little bit of JavaScript using jQuery uh, and interact with those elements, because they're, they're part of the DOM just like anything else. So in this case, I'm doing an HTML5 video, and I'm turning the volume on and off. OK. So uh, I have another demo here. Who wants to come volunteer and get a Google Cardboard? Anybody? Raise a hand, please. Come on down. You're the next contestant. Hi. Hello. What's your name? Jessica. Jessica, thank you for coming. All right. Have you ever used one of these before? No. All right, fantastic. That's so they call it, uh, you know, first time is the best. All right. Let's see. Can you guys see that? I'm hoping this works on this projector and it doesn't completely destroy the Oculus. Always fun doing live demos. All right. Oh, gosh. It, I have it upside down. That was scary. All right. So go ahead and put this on, and you can look around. You may have to turn around for the video. I'm not, the, so there, usually there's another device, which is a camera, um, that gets, your, gets you in the 3D space so it knows exactly where you are. It all got flipped upside down. There you go. So this is what she, you're, you guys are uh, seeing, what she's seeing in her two eyes. So as she rolls over the video, that's turning the HTML5 video on and off. And of course, the Rickroll didn't load. Oh my gosh. <laughs> of all things. Thank you, internet gods. All right, thank you. What'd you think? That was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Oh, I, yep. Don't forget your present. Yay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we got it up yet? Here we go. Yeah. All right, so um, if you notice, she had her hands up on the device. Um, not really. Most people, when they put it on, they immediately uh, go to look at their hands and wonder where they are, just like the president here. Um, there are some uh, 
devices that are used uh, that are going to be coming out soon with the Oculus Touch. HTC Vive, uh, HTC Vive already has theirs out. It allow you to interact in uh, virtuality with your hands and um, do fun things like catch babies. So um, Oculus hasn't released their uh, touch devices yet. <laughs> so uh, there's this other device called Elite Motion, uh, which tr will track your hands, uh, actually. And so I was going to um, set out to uh, develop some stuff in, in Leap Motion. So this is an example of a chess game that somebody built. I thought I might try to recreate, but <laughs> it turned out to be really hard. <laughs> Ends up just being a rage quit simulator. <laughs> These are all hilarious. There's just so many of them. Like, you can tell where this is going, right? <laughs> so uh, yeah, I decided I, I'd do something a little more simple. Um, so we're going to build a uh, slot machine simulator. And we're going to use React uh, to do this. So just because it's um, DOM, uh, just like any other DOM, you can use any uh, JavaScript library uh, to manipulate that DOM. Um, so in this case, I used React. And uh, this is what it looks like. It's on GitHub if you want to check it out. Um, I originally built this for a PHP conference, so the back end is in PHP. Uh, front end is all React and JavaScript. That's uh, out there on GitHub, like I mentioned. Um, there are quite a few JavaScript files to include. Um, but the main one it, that we've added is the Leap Controller, and the scene.js is our file. And I am by, by no means a React expert, so there's probably somebody out there saying, oh, this is not the way to do it in React. But um, this is how I did it in React. Uh, so you can create those um, DOM elements that we were talking about uh, as React components uh, and render them, just like anything else in React. So you're going to build your scene up um, with React and have all the uh, two-way data binding that you have set up. So I need one more volunteer who wants a Google Cardboard right here in front. Thank you. Don't forget this. I won't. All right. Switch projectors here. So of course, one more cable, because we haven't had enough yet. You guys see that yet? Oh, cool. I may have to refresh that. We'll do the sealed fashion way. <laughs> Can you at least see it in there? Try it. Yeah. All right, cool. So squint. <laughs> and uh, try putting your hands out in front. Yep, there they are. They're floating out, little Trump hands. For some reason, they look small without the camera. <laughs> So yeah, you can't hear the sound, but you know it's got a slot machine. You pull it and win. Um, you can try this from your regular browsers. Um, it works without the. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. It's always exciting when things work. Like I mentioned before, lots and lots of cables. All right. We can't see anything. Is the, did I turn this off, maybe? There we go. All right, so um, A-Frame just uh, launched a new version, 0.3.0. Uh, I didn't have any of this in the slides because it just came out a couple days ago. Uh, but it has a lot of new nice features, like a uh, scene composition uh, builder that lets you see um, you know, the scene in 3D, help you with development uh, of that. So I'm, I hopefully, I've showed you that it's pretty easy to get started um, doing WebVR stuff. As long as you know HTML, um, you, know, you can get into it. 
You don't even need any of this equipment. It'll just work in your browser. Uh, and then anybody that has a virtual reality device will be able to take advantage of it. Um, the one thing I want to leave you with is a quote from Bill Gates, uh, is that we always overestimate the change that'll occur in the next two years and underestimate the change, change that'll occur in the next 10. Um, so like the people on uh, the movie WALL-E, don't be lulled into an action. Uh, virtual reality is going to be a uh, big market in the future. If you want to learn more about um, virtual reality, uh, there's a book out there. Um, I didn't mention it. I didn't put it in the slides, but there's also an um, awesome A-frame uh, uh, repo on GitHub. So I'll be around uh, later. If anybody else wants to do demos, I have the regular Oculus Rift uh, to demo as well, not just the DK2. Um, I am Andrew Cassell. If you want to reach me on Twitter, it's ALC277. Thank you for your attention. I apologize for all the technical hicc hiccups. It's always a lot of uh, fun and pressure to do it on a live stage. So thank you. Thank <laughs> you.